Good, how are you? Great, happy to be here. First Comic Con? First one. Comic Con virgin. No longer, no longer. It's been, can't go back, can't go back. So, can you start off about talking a little bit about your character and what attracted you to the series? Like, sure, definitely. Uh, I play Katie Frank, she's an elementary school teacher. She's also a single mother, and her son happens to be in her class. And she um, is also in a custody battle with the parents, or grand his grandparents, so the, the father's parents. Um, and they go to the hospital to kind of sing for some sick people, and they end up stuck in the hospital. So she has to be the protector, keep the parents calm, and make sure that all the kids are safe and kept under control. So I really loved the I really love the character. She's very complex. She's strong. She's vulnerable. She's got a story, which is so beautiful to get to tell. Um, so that attracted me to the project is like well-written women, you know, like strong women who have who are broken and, and have stories and, and represent women. So I'm very excited to play a role like that. Um, the project itself is great. You know, I look at when I read scripts, if I want to know what's going to happen in the next episode, I, t I tell that it's, that tells me it's going to be a good project. So immediately when I read the script, I was like, okay, what's happening next? So, uh, but yeah, and great people on board, so I just feel so blessed to be a part of it. What do you think of the premise, you know, the whole notion of this sort of concept? It's great because it's real. You know, we, there's a lot of viral series, but most of them, thank you, come, um, you turn into a zombie, something supernatural. But what's great about this is it's real. It, it has happened. And you have a degree of separation when you have to see the stuff in the news, right? You hear about Ebola and you kind of know, okay, it trickled here, but you don't really get to know the actual victims. So what's great about this is you get to know these people and you get to fall in love with them and see them go through these kind of chaotic times and see how they deal with it. And, you know, people under crisis can be very... They can, they can be very animalistic or they can be very, very heroic. So I just love them. Are we going to pretty quickly have to deal with the birth and the contingent zone? Oh, because there's a baby coming. I, I don't know how many months along she is. She looks like she's going to pop. Yeah, it looks she looks pretty like cool. she's like at seven or eight. I mean, they were meeting with adoption. Oh, that you can adopt the baby. Now, I mean, I, mean, I think I think maybe adoptions would go on hold at this point. Because there's like, you know, right, more but, important but things. that's how far along she is that they were ready to. Right, right, right. I think, yeah, there could be a baby. It'd be like The Walking Dead, right? A new baby coming in at a crazy time. But, yeah, maybe. It'd be cool to see if it's a boy or a girl. And, and what it's like growing up kind of around the virus. I really hope the baby doesn't get sick. <laughs> that would really suck. I mean, is there also an aspect that if characters are needy who never would have met in another situation, they might have a very positive relationship that good things can come out of this other yeah. very tragic situation? Yeah, I think any situation is like that. There's always kind of a beautiful silver lining in anything. Um, I think that's what Jake and Katie are, why they're so great. You wouldn't necessarily think that Jake and Katie would come together in the outside world. They seem to kind of butt heads a little bit at first. Um, so for them to find a close relationship, whatever, I don't know exactly what's going to happen. But um, it's beautiful to see relationships build and also see relationships that started before this crisis and see how they can handle the pressure. So with that, yeah. Do you have anything in common with your character? Definitely. I do. I love Katie. She I think I have the kind of survivor instinct that she has. I love kids. I actually, which is funny, David Nutter, our director, sent me one of the songs the kids sing in um, in the actual hospital and I I mentor kids and I teach them how to sing and we go to we go to seniors homes and so I do that in my regular life. So it's really beautiful to see life mimic art. And uh, Katie's, yeah, she's strong, but she's broken and vulnerable. And all women have a story to tell and a broken heart. And I think that's a lot like me. Um, but she's also different in a lot of ways, too. So I get to kind of explore that. You have to bring who you are to every character. So essentially, she is me, just in this situation. Did you have a lot of, a lot of preparation for your role? Or? Definitely. I try and eat, sleep, and breathe it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm um, always trying to think through her mind and uh, think about what would Katie do and and in life kind of if a situation arises where I can learn something about who she is then I take that like I've interviewed before I started I interviewed a few friends who were single moms and who've been through abusive relationships so I could understand their world and then I found what related in my life if there was anything even if it's not the same thing you know a little 
inkling of what that was and then used that. So yeah, always prepping, always thinking about her, always finding a new thing to learn. Uh, how many episodes have you seen? Just the, the pilot. Oh, just the pilot. Yeah. Okay, so you, and how far ahead have you read? I don't know anything. Nothing. <laughs> I, know. I think you're lying. <laughs> I know, I could be lying. I don't know. But no, it's really exciting. Actually, we were on the, we were on the train on the way here, and uh, Matt and Chris were sitting, uh, our showrunners were sitting with a, what looked like a script. And I was like, what is that over there? And I'm like, oh, I see Atlanta. What is that? Let me, let me read it. And they were like, top secret. So, I don't know. I really, I'm so excited to get the first script and just get to learn how all of these characters unfold because I think these are some of the best written relationships and characters I've ever read in a script. And there's such a heartbeat and a stunning undercurrent of love in, in this project. So I'm just so excited to see how people grow and change. Yeah. When will you start filming? Uh, we start mid-August, early to mid-August. So we're all packing up our bags and trying to move, or getting ready to move to Atlanta, finding apartments and all that. Have you met the rat named Justin Bieber yet? <laughs> I, I, I've, I've met all the rats. I actually, that day on set, I, went, I kept playing with them and getting distracted, and they kind of climbed over the little, the little crates, and I was like, go, be free. It's okay. I won't tell them. But they were really cute. They were really cute. Are they all named after a different pop star? There, what is there? There's Rolf, <laughs> Justin Bieber. I can't remember all of them. I'm sure we, we can start naming them. But it's cool you're not freaked out by that. No, I, li I like creepy crawly things. I used to like play with worms when I was a kid. And I used to have pet nukes. They were named Robert and Ernie. They were black and they had like uh, orange tummies. So yeah, I like all that stuff. <laughs> Is this show shouldn't freak you out at all? Oh yeah, well you know, bloody coughing up blood is a little bit of a different world. Yes, I'm a slight hypochondriac. Slight. So I think well I think everybody will become one once you watch that. <laughs> yeah. So have fun, have fun with that.